Welcome back to the Whole Council podcast. I'm John Snyder, and today we have kind of an unusual podcast because we want to talk about a particular ministry uh, that distributes really good Christian literature. And the name of the ministry is Chapel Library, a ministry of Mount Zion Bible Church. And this is in Pensacola, Florida. Um, So there's a reason that we want to bring this up to you at this time, uh, but let me get to that in a moment. Years ago, when I was in college and I became a believer, I remember seeing some gospel tracts. Uh, So these were just short little pamphlets. And uh, I picked one up and I was surprised to see that it wasn't a modern writer and it wasn't just kind of a, you know, the the Romans road, uh, you know, three or four easy points to becoming a Christian. It was actually a sermon by J.C. Ryle or Andrew Bonar or Charles Spurgeon or others. And uh, these these little pamphlets, these Puritan sermons put down in in a small form, were published by a a company called the Chapel Library and distributed freely. And so it really was quite exciting to see that somebody was putting out pamphlets that were worth reading and you didn't want to just toss them down. Now, they are in the original language, many of them. And so while some updating has been done, very little has. And so as as a college student, it took me a little time to work through them, but they were well worth the time. Then fast forward a few years to when I was pastoring here in the early days in New Albany with Christ Church. And someone gave me a subscription to a small um, booklet that would come out every quarter. And it was called the Free Grace Broadcaster. Now, the Free Grace Broadcaster was uh, also by Chapel Library. Um, it was a more substantial thing. It wasn't just a little, it wasn't a little track. It was, it was a proper booklet. And it would take one great theme from the scripture, like providence, God's rule, uh, holiness, uh, salvation through grace, uh, you know, the doctrine of repentance, uh, family, different different key topics. And it would then have, you know, a number of old writers whose sermons or excerpts from their sermons would be laid out in, in a very orderly fashion. And you would look at the biblical doctrine from that and moving on to the application. And it really was a, a worthwhile thing to read. It was a lot of good stuff. In, in a form that came, you know, very inexpensively or free. Uh, after that, uh, a few years further in the future, I, uh, I met a man named Jeff Pollard. And Jeff Pollard is an elder now and was a pastor at the church that is behind this ministry. And it was really interesting to meet Jeff because, you know, I had been acquainted with the ministry of his church long before I had met the man that was behind much of it at that point. And I heard Jeff preach at a conference that I was going to be speaking at as well. I was so encouraged. In fact, I think the first time I heard him was at a um, ministerial luncheon where all the preachers of the conference were given 10 minutes to say something that it was called like the burning heart, something that was burning on your heart, something you really felt needed to be said. So that's pretty revealing. What would each man say? You know, so uh, Dr. Joel Beakey was there and other men, uh, you know, like Paul Washer. And uh, Jeff got up and I had not heard Jeff before. And Jeff talked about the loveliness of Christ. And I was so encouraged. Another thing about Jeff that just really impressed me was wherever he went, he had a small group of young uh, ministerial candidates or young men with him. And after the conference and all the hours and all the work, and they can be pretty tiring, Jeff would gather the young men around him in the evening and continue to talk to them about Christ and help train them. Uh, from that point forward, every time I went to that conference, Jeff was the guy I, I wanted to see. And uh, so each year we would always try to at least sit down and catch up. Now that brings us to the present. A couple of months ago, uh, as Media Gratia has been looking at putting together a small um, set of our favorite books on the on the person and work of Jesus Christ and publishing those as, as a nice set, uh, I looked on Chapel Library's website and I found that they had one of the books that we wanted to publish. And so they'd already done all the work of putting it onto their website digitally, which made it a lot easier for us. And the book is called uh, The True Christian's Love to the Unseen Christ by Thomas Vincent, a Puritan. Really wonderful book and kind of hard to find now. 
And so I contacted Chapel Library and I asked them, would they be willing to allow us to use their digital copy? That would save us a lot of work. Would they, would they let us buy that from them or, or whatever the requirement would be? And, you know, I didn't know how they would respond. Immediately, they responded by email and said, we would be glad for you to do that and you can just have it for free. And it just made me stop and think about um, the way that that ministry has operated through the many years since really since the late 1970s and how they have constantly depended upon the faithfulness of God to provide all the funding, how they have not begged for money, how they have not charged for things. And, um, and what an encouraging thing that was. So I, I thought that today we would just look at that and I, maybe I could introduce you to something you've never heard of before. Chapel Library. Now they have a really they have a good uh, website called chapellibrary.org. And if you go to the website, what you find is that uh, they have a number of main sections. There's literature, and this comes both in printed form and then in digital. There are uh, there's a section called prison for the prison ministries. There's the audio books. And then there are theological courses. So maybe I could just run through a lot of that with you and kind of give you a, um, an idea of what's there. Now, I want to be very clear. I have two purposes for this. One is I would love to introduce you, if you don't know about Chapel Library, to this very helpful resource. Everything they print is trustworthy. Uh, it's all from the the basic you know approach to scripture, which we feel is most honoring to God, you know uh, a, a a sense in which God is big and majestic, man is absolutely needy, and Christ is all sufficient. You know, if you want to nickname that reformed, that's fine, but uh, I think really it's just biblical. And so they use the writers. Uh, from the past, the best writers, and they give us the best of the best writers, and you know maybe just excerpts of sermons or just some of their best sermons um, in in this literature. Now, if you go to literature, you can look it up by uh, you know by topic. You can look it up by title. Also, these are published in multiple languages. English, of course, is the main language, but they have a very large Spanish selection. But that's not all. I was surprised when I hit languages. I thought it would just say English and Spanish. Uh, Amharic, Arabic, uh, some that I can't pronounce, Chinese, Czech, French, um, other languages as well. And they put all of this out for free. Um, if you sort by authors, it's amazing. I don't have time to read you the authors. I, I don't know how many are here, but when I look just at you know, at the A's, we have Thomas Adams, the Puritan, or James W. Alexander, the uh, late 18th century uh, minister and theologian. His father, Archibald Alexander, a leader in the Second Great Awakening, as well as a great theologian. The Puritan, Isaac Ambrose, um, John Arndt. Uh, if we get into the B's, we have Richard Barcellus, a modern Reformed Baptist, um, Peter Barnes, Bodie Bauckham, so Richard Baxter, Joe Beakey. It's just, there are just so many. Uh, and that's the author. So if you go to that page under literature and the, you, you can see that it has a tab for authors you can see for yourself. Um, so as, as you look at this, you realize they have about 900 different works uh, that they publish and offer to you. Now, if you go to one of them, um, you find that like a book, like the the true Christian's love for the unseen Christ. If you go to that book and hit it, you'll see that it'll come up and it'll give you some information about the book. It's 122 pages. It comes in a paperback form and it says under this value $3.52. And that's kind of a strange number. You know, you think, well, is this free? Uh, does it cost $3.52? That's a very cheap paperback book. Um, I don't mind paying that, but what is it? And then, and right beside that, it has a little tab, what's this? And so if you hit that, you find this. It says, each household can request one order uh, of up to $20 value of printed Christ-centered literature per month, free of charge. And then if you go over $20 a month per household, then they ask that if you can, they would ask you to go ahead and pay for that. So in other words, the true Christian's love to the unseen Christ is $3.52. So you've got, you know, $16.48 left. Uh, and you can get up to $20 a month of their price. And this book costs $3.52 without paying anything. And uh, that really is uh, quite gracious of them. Um, they do that. They offer that to anyone. 
Uh, you, you get on their uh, website and you can see where you can subscribe and become a household that can receive the material. On top of their literature, they also have a prison ministry. And um, if you go to their tab that says prison, what you find is that in 2018, they did a, uh, a survey and found that 2.3 million Americans are behind bars. So they began to provide uh, free of charge Christian literature, tracts, booklets, paperbacks, audio tapes, theological study courses uh, for, for chaplains and workers in the prison and inmates in the prison to be given away. So uh, these were offered and they are presently uh, supplying over 4,000 different uh, institutions in the United States and Canada. Now, there's another tab, and that is the audio ministry. And this includes sermons at Mount Zion Bible Church with Pastor Clarence Simmons, uh, also with Jeff Pollard's sermons, as well as other visiting pastors. And uh, then they have uh, a number of sermons by Al Martin, Reformed Baptist. And not only that, but his lectures in pastoral theology, which have been turned into a, a three volume. Uh, set of books. And then there are conferences and uh, sermons by Lee Roy Shelton Jr. available as well. And finally, there is a tab called courses. And these are theological courses that are available. And now these courses can be taken kind of uh, in, a, in a more intensive way where uh, you have to supply, you, you, you're given homework and reading and you supply through writing the answers and then you have a grader who will respond to that, or you can just read it and kind of go along on your own. Uh, the courses cover a number of general topics, salvation or the doctrine of soteriology, the Christian's practical walk, uh, general studies, and doctrine. Now, under each of these, what we find is that there are um, three levels available. So if you go under doctrine, you find basic, intermediate, and advanced. So there are a number of courses for studying doctrine at a basic level, and then there are the intermediate level courses, and then there are the advanced courses. So all of that under their theological course ministry. And another ministry they have linked with Mount Zion Bible Church uh, is the SpurgeonGems.org website. And this is where you can go and you can find the largest collection of Spurgeon resources and uh, online. And this includes the complete 63-volume set of sermons, some audio sermons, books, and quotes of Spurgeon. And, and if you go through their list of books, I was looking here, there really, there's just too many to read. Words of warning for daily life. Words of counsel for Christian workers. I mean, half of these, I've read a lot of Spurgeon and half of these I've never heard of. Um, God Always Cares, another small book that he wrote. The Saint and His Savior. Sermons on Sovereignty. Able to the Uttermost. The Clue of the Maze. Farm Sermons, uh, the Gospel of the Kingdom, All of Grace, uh, etc. On top of Spurgeon's books and sermons and audio recordings of many of his sermons, you can find his prayers in print. There are 26 prayers in print uh, with then a sermon on prayer by Spurgeon. So, so many things available. Let me just, I want to show you one book that they publish. So they put this together in a nice heritage edition. It's the, it's Free Grace Broadcasters on Five Major Doctrines of the Gospel. So the first part of the book is the gospel itself, basic sermons. So sermons like uh, A Report from Heaven by Thomas Boston. What is the gospel message by J.I. Packer? God's Unspeakable Love by Thomas Manton, A Right Understanding of Sin by J.C. Ryle, and then there's more by Spurgeon and Jonathan Edwards. The second part is on Christ's substitutionary death, and so there are sermons by men like A.W. Pink, Christ's Federal Work, or Spurgeon's The Great Exchange Explained, or Octavius Winslow, An Entire Pardon, the Puritan John Owen, Satisfaction and Substitution Outlined, Jonathan Edwards, God's Wisdom and Christ's Substitution. The third major section of the book is on the doctrine of justification. And again, it, it contains sermons by men like Spurgeon, Justification Made Plain, 
or the Presbyterian theologian Charles Hodge, the meaning of justification, or James Buchanan, the immediate ground of justification, or Horatius Bonar, not faith, but Christ, Robert Trail, Puritan, the abuse of justification, J.C. Ryle, peace through justification, to give you just some. The fourth part of the book, imputed righteousness. And again, we find sermons by Spurgeon, Bonar, Calvin, Hodge, Ebenezer Erskine, uh, Thomas Brooks, J.C. Ryle. And the final section is on the doctrine of repentance and and by another host of names from Puritans and post-Puritans, Great Awakening Men. So they put this together in a nice book. And it's really just a great book to have, a resource on sermons by some of the greatest preachers in the history of Christendom and on the, all of them on the topics of these five great doctrines dealing with the gospel. Now, I, I mentioned that I, I wanted to introduce you to this ministry, Chapel Library, uh, not only because it would do you good to be able to read their materials. And it's a way to get them uh, you know, inexpensively or for free, depending on which way you want to approach it. But I also want to tell you about this ministry to encourage you that if you're looking for a place where you can invest money and you know that the, th- that the money that's given will go to producing things that really honor the Lord, and do lasting good to souls. Chapel Library is a place you ought to consider. You can go online and you can see that if you would like to donate, you can. Uh, So give the website a look, chapellibrary.org, and uh, and you can subscribe there and get monthly materials, you know, five or six books, um, uh, pamphlets uh, for free each month, Puritans, 18th century Great Awakening men, and the modern men who are in the same vein as well as uh, supporting work to prisons, uh, getting into some theological courses or listening to audiobooks. Really wonderful ministry.